Tomorrow is what day, son? Monday. That and what else? Monday. Oh my lord. Uh, Swedish national holiday, June 6th. Huh. So I expect some coffee and a bunch of bananas delivered to my door. Good luck, good luck with that. Yeah, and I don't mean a bunch, like four or five. I mean like a bunch you get off a tree. Okay. You want the banana spider with it? <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I hate to say this, but damn, that looks good, that bad job. Every time I drop by a new car, stop on like, nah, this is better. I was dreaming this morning or daydreaming this morning about actually taking this for a drive around town <laughs> and having people be like, what the hell is that? Because you just, you do not see these cars around here. No, you don't. In uh, Bay Area, California. They just don't. Teslaville. Yeah, it's all Teslas. So, yeah, old Camaros like this just do not exist. I mean, I've seen probably four in the last 10 years. I mean, there's just yeah. none. Now, you see the first generation Camaros a little bit, you know, the occasional Mustang, but classic cars, classic vintage, whatever you want to call this era, they just don't exist around here. So it, it will stick out like a sore thumb. So my dream always was a 32 Ford open, engine popping, big three quads in Sweden. I had to beat off the women with a bat. They don't exist in that, those days. That would be something. Oh, even, these, even these days, that yeah, re yeah. really doesn't exist yeah. now. Of course, you probably couldn't even get it registered to drive on the road in Sweden now. <laughs> I go to Norway. Or Norway. Oh, no, they're all electric this yes. year. Yes. So, anywho. All right. Uh, so, news of the day. We got the new door lock in. Or latch, rather. I already installed it. Uh, we went through the whole process last time, so there's no point in showing that again. But just to give you an idea of how nicely that works now. And the, the latch here. Well, it's just butter the way it's supposed to be um, interestingly enough this one I think it's an OER unit I forget um, this thing was in a plastic bag and all greasy all oh, right so yeah so they they lubed that thing the whole thing is just slimy as hell which I'm like well that's a good idea um, so that's nice uh, I don't even remember those those I think that I know the other excuse me all one had like a cotton type cover it's on the inside okay with all metal to metal, it has a kind of noise damper on these things. Because I mean, I it's close as well and all that, but it still sounds like two trucks hitting each other. So this one's not too bad here. It's got a little, yeah. we got new, I got these new ones right. in, so we'll put those in, see if that makes any difference. But you got you know, this thing in here, which yeah. just fell off. <laughs> that, that, that clip is still just giving us so much oh, no. grief. Cannot get that clip to work properly. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of sloppy stuff in here that we want to try and tighten up because yeah we don't want these things rattling and clanking around every time you close the doors but well, we'll see anybody that has any ideas on how to silence that stuff let me know we do have the uh, whatever material on this guy here so focus this thing to keep that from rattling around but yeah this is anywho uh so we're gonna work on the power door locks today see how far we get with that um, and then we'll go from there. At some point here, we're going to take the hardware out for the windows. We might do that today too. just get that done. Um, so we can get ready for the power windows. Um, we also have to figure out where the speakers are going to go. Um, as I was telling Pops, I can't put the door panels on properly right now because the window crank is sticking out here. So once we get the window hardware off, then we can put the door panels on and figure out where they sit relative to the speakers and all that stuff. So, all right, let's get to work on the power door locks. Go grab that thing that I cut out over there, please. All right, so we are ready to start on the power door locks. So this is the kit from Moda Innovations. Um, I got this off Screaming Chicken. Um, so it comes with some, you can buy these things in two pieces, I think. So there's the installation hardware and then the actuators. You can buy those separately. Um, so I have the whole kit. So they come with these templates. You gotta cut out to mark where the mounting holes go. And then these are the rods that connect to the door latches. Uh, so first first is to get this lined up on the car and mark the holes where the mounting brackets go. All right, so template here goes on the lower corner of the door. And you see the two holes that are marked out there. Hopefully I can get my Sharpie through there. 
So basically you just want to line this up on the edges here, like so. Mark your two holes. Does it work? Yeah, it's like that. All right, so the instructions call for drilling out with a 332nds bit first and then a 316ths. Make sure your window's in the upright position before you do this, even though I don't have any windows. All right, so we went back to the painless harness, um, got all this stuff set up, um, put the switch in there, and then we're trying to figure out which way is up and which way is down because the connectors don't match between the two, uh, between the Moda and the painless. Um, so we just took the blue to the blue and just tried that blue to blue, and that worked. So up was up, down was down. So. So that's good. Um, so I don't have enough connectors to do both sides of the doors. I only have one of these waterproof connectors left. So I'll just do the driver's side and then we'll worry about the rest for later. All right, so the driver's side hook goes into the actuator like this with that thing angled to the side like so. All right, so we decided to take a detour there and get all the window hardware out of there. Um, the, oh man, I just forgot the name of those things. What are those things called? Regulators um, were a nightmare getting all those rivets out. Um, so that ended up taking us like 45 minutes or something yeah. just to get those things out, but that, that's done. So now we have lots of room in here to get the hardware installed. Um, the kit, didn't come with the fasteners to attach that, so I got some M4s here that will hopefully work. But I get got to get my hand way up inside there and get that thing attached, so we'll see how that goes. We shall see how this goes. So I've got to get the door lock rod engaged up into the latch first, which will be fun. And I've got to get the screws in there. Don't mind my big ugly head. So, oh, here's the sorry, the hardware we put on there. wasn't so bad. Ow. That was. And by some miracle, I was telling Pops, I found a seven millimeter wrench. What are the odds? I should have put a washer on that. Too late. Okay, as Pop said, it's still not too late. So, put a washer on there.
Okay. Give me some battery. Sure. Let's see if this thing works. So we wired it so we wired it so that thing goes up. Right. But that's not unlock. Because it's on the far side of the door. You can see here when I pull down, or up rather, this is unlock. It's pulling this thing down. If you can see this, sorry. Here. So unlock. Sorry. When I push unlock. Right. It's pushing this down. Which is we want to reverse that. Yeah. I'm not sure how well it's working either. Looks like it's latching. This is definitely unlock when you pull this up. Right. And it's, it's lock. It's not, it doesn't want to stop down. Let me do the door handle so you can see it. Not more room there either. Okay, if I go now. Anyway, I think we have it backwards. Okay. try to film this and see if anybody has any ideas for me. So if I put the key in the lock, okay, and then I turn the key to lock it. Thank you, Father. So I lock it here. I let it go. You see the solenoid is trying to pull it back down like it has a spring inside it or something. Um, and if I engage the lock here to move it up, it's fine, but then as soon as I let it go, it drags it back down again, so it won't stay locked. So basically what's happened is we lock the door, and just trying to open the door will unlock the door. And I think it's all related to that solenoid, but I don't know. I'll take it out and see what happens. Alright, I think we sort of, kind of have it working now. Um, so what I ended up doing is taking the bracket for this guy down there um, and moving it up. Uh, as you were seeing before, it seemed like it was pulling the, the latch back down. So I pushed it up basically about as far as it'll go. So when it's in its fully compressed state, it's all the way down. I'm going to now see in there. Focus. What are you focusing on camera? It's working now, but when it's locked, it's not super difficult to unlock it. Um, I think that was the right way, whatever. Um, so it's still, I don't know, you know, you can't just unlock it by <laughs> opening the door like you could before, but I don't know if it's strong enough. So it might be maybe someday you have to put a spring or something on it to pull it up. Um, yeah, up, I think, because the solenoid is trying to pull it down. But it works. What a pain in the rear. No kidding. Something that should have taken half an hour total if everything fit and worked. 
I have nothing more to say. I'm a samurai doorknob. Yep. So let's see. This, no, no. if we had not put this all the way at the bottom and like lined it up on the inside here instead, I think that would have been about right if we did it there instead of where we did it. Um, just for reference. So it came, we brought it up maybe three eighths of an inch. Um, decent amount. All right, we're gonna call that a day. That was not fun. Um, but we got it, got that part done. So that's good. And we got power locks. Yeah. Yeah, you can go ahead and pull the battery. All right, I'm gonna clean up in here and we're gonna call that a day. See ya.